I, I really am hopeful, and I'm, I'm not. Then this is going to be very prominent on my, my my obituary. I really want people to be given tons of money to safe streets Austin because they really should. We really need a well paid, um, um, fully staffed organization like Safe Streets Austin to be looking out for improving our streets on an, on an ongoing basis. I also have been serving pretty recently on the board of tree folks in Austin. And there is, we do need to do a lot better with street trees in Austin. And so I, I, I also, tree, tree folks is also going to be mentioned in my obituary. But then in terms of the other urbanist groups they've been working on so hard, working so hard on all this stuff, Aura has just been amazing, um, has been doing amazing things. Um, there are so many portals for people to get into urbanist activity. Aura is a good one and very large and active. If you're more interested in folks in your own neighborhood, there's a group called Friends of Austin Neighborhoods. If you're more interested in what else we got there, there's Green 35. Um, there's an awful lot going on with regard to I-35 and we're about to make some huge, very big, big mistakes on um, on I-35 as TxDOT continues on with its ridiculous mission to expand I-35. So, um, so the, the Rethink 35 continues to provide a good portal for people to to enter that the world of activism, activism that way. Same thing with uh, Reconnect Austin, which is a similar approach. Um, and then on a, on a on kind of a broader scale, uh, there is the the local chapter of the Congress for the New Urbanism, which is um, a little more doctrinal, but is a very very important organization and involves an awful lot of really really good people. And it's really worth tuning into. CNU and at least getting on getting onto their list again. It's uh, CNU.org, uh, and I think I think the local chapter is at something like CNUATX.org um, or something like that. Um, but the Congress for the New Urbanism has been hugely important for uh, for the urbanization of cities in recent years. And um, so I would encourage anybody with an interest to, to, uh, uh, to, to take a look at them and consider joining them and at least going to their events and checking out what they're doing. Barbara City has been calling attention to some of these issues in a way that has had just breathtaking results that have actually moved the Texas Department of Transportation to make very, very, uh, make very significant changes in its policies to make random conservative counties all across Texas adopt policies that will save lives. Uh, Farm and City is actually getting this sort of thing on the ground across Texas and actually making it part of the, the language. Just as, as one example, they actually got something passed in the legislature that actually codified the, the rule of uh, a crash, not accident. For years within the movement, we've emphasized the need to talk about crashes and not accidents. But it was Pharma City that actually finally got that done as a matter of state legislation, uh, and and uh, which is which is just amazing. So Pharma City is is doing just amazing work, uh, actually getting getting the job done on the state level and on the local level throughout Texas. There is still an awful lot of work to do. The system that we have for distribution of federal transportation funds is highly flawed in very many ways, not both in terms of being just statistically unrepresentative, but also demographically unrepresentative and unfair to communities of color. And so Farm and City has been working very hard to demonstrate that and really working to overhaul the whole way that we support transportation within the state of Texas, which is just, it, it is really taking a systemic approach to the whole system of, of, of transportation in Texas, which is, uh, which is just a, a breathtaking undertaking and they really could use your help. It's also just very exciting to see some of the charts and data that Farm and City is pulling together. They pulled together things 
that a Washington think tank would struggle with for years. Just incredible, incredible pieces of, of uh, research and work that are presented in a very coherent way uh, and make a very compelling case about why our growth patterns, especially our transportation growth patterns, have gotten so screwed up. And Farm and City has harnessed so much of that information and, and, and presented, presented it in a very useful way so that you can make use of it, so the policymakers can make use of it, so that we'll all be able to talk about it at the next cocktail party. And so Farm and City is very much worth um, your attention. That, that, and, and your financial support. That doesn't happen for, for free. Uh, they, they, they do have an amazing, amazing staff. Right down to, it was Farm and City that, that, that really paid all the staff that enabled Austin to become the biggest city with no parking requirements in America. That, that to, to a large degree, that, that was Farm, farm and City. And uh, so they are just doing amazing, amazing work that behind the scenes that nobody sus suspects. And so I really, uh, I really encourage everybody to take a close look at them and, and consider giving them both your, your time and your treasure and your talent because it's, um, uh, they're a very, very worthy organization. But there are a lot of other related groups involved, in, including groups of architects and landscape architects, um, of people who are just interested in a lot of these issues. And so really just tapping into the movement and that starting to interact personally uh, at some of these, come to some of these fun events, help, help throw some of these fun happy hours, come to some of these happy hours and just have a good time. Have a beer with, with Hayden Walker and talk to her about what's going on or, or, or Adam or Jay or talk to anybody about what's going on because there's so much fun things. There's so many fun things going on that you get involved with and so many opportunities for making Austin a, a, a better place. Austin is going to be a truly amazing city. It's, it's, I feel like we, I, 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 I feel awkward saying that because it always felt like Austin was a truly amazing city. And yet we have fallen short in, in, in important ways. Our, our, our streets are, tend not to be that great. Our public spaces tend not to be that great. Um, and we now finally have the opportunity to get that right. And that is what is so thrilling, to be able to dive in there and actually fix some of that and actually demonstrate some very visible, tangible success. And when I say demonstrate, I mean, we will be demonstrating with numbers, lives saved, dollars saved, and you'll be able to just look at a place and know it's a it's a it's a more inviting place, and you'll start seeing more sidewalk cafes. Going. You'll see the successes of your efforts as you as you dive in, and so it is such a huge opportunity here that we have here in Austin to contribute to, to Austin's continuing evolution as a true urban center, a place that that, that offers. Um, walkable environments that are inviting to people, whether they are in cars or not. And we, uh, we, we will be doing so much better at that in the future. We will be having so many successes along the way, just as, as we have in the past. Uh, it will be a lot of fun. And, and so in, it, to the extent that anyone has any interest in, in a movement like this, this is the place to do it. Uh, no place is, is growing our Austin. No, no, no place needs the help like Austin. And with your help, we can make, we can do just amazing, amazing stuff here. And it's gonna be, it's, it's, it really is gonna be great. And so I'm so excited for all of y'all who, who are gonna have the opportunity to, to jump into all of that, to making our streets more appealing places in the future. Um, because it's, it's, it's gonna be fun and you're gonna love it. I gotta mention one of the most exciting initi initiatives I've seen in a long time which is called City Lead. And frankly, I'm, 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 I'm still, my breath is still taken away by the degree to which council members have been embracing this. The, the concept is on every single arterial across Austin, the major roads that, uh, that Austinites use um, 
for for uh, transportation, you take uh, uh, at, at least one lane and you put it to use for some use other than its current use for cars. Because in in every single case, our arterials are uh, predominantly devoted to the the use of space for for cars and nothing else. And so the concept is to try something different, uh, to try dedicated bus lanes, to try shared use of bicycle and pedestrian paths, to try dedicated bike lanes, whatever makes most sense in, in the particular context. For instance, if it's, um, if it's a corridor where you really need a high frequency bus lane, well, that's what you do. You put in a, a, a high frequency bus lane where, where it won't be obstructed by traffic. And then you, you use the remaining space for a shared bicycle pedestrian path. Uh, and it's such a simple concept. And, it, and it's so well aligned with all of our climate goals about shifting away from reliance on fossil fuels. We also have a transportation goal that talks about getting uh, to a different uh, mode split. Right now, we are, we are very, very heavily reliant on single electric vehicles to get to work. And yet we've set this very ambitious goal of getting to a 50-50 transportation mode split where 50% of people are getting there through other means. And so we have some ambitious goals and the only way we're gonna get there is if we start taking some dramatic action. And this kinds of climate change that we're seeing today, if, the, if, the, if that doesn't call for dramatic action, I don't know what does. It is time for dramatic action. And if you're not convinced of that, please go watch a video from, uh, from Greta Thunberg. Or watch videos of polar bears or icebergs or, or wildfires or uh, flooding. There is so much going on in the world today that should be a wake up call that we really need very, very urgent action right now. And so City Leap is a local effort to take that kind of ur urgent action. It's to say, okay, we're gonna get serious that on our arterials, we're going to get serious about providing space for other modes. And it's not that hard. We have the technology. It's not even that expensive. And if you look at what has happened when we've made this sort of change in the past, we've actually wound up saving money very, fairly quickly because, because leaving our, our roads in their current deadly condition winds up be, being very, very expensive. So it's not, and it's not a very costly undertaking, but the but it is a it is a radical proposal to take a lane on every arterial and and put it to, to other use. My favorite potential application for this is is on, on South First, and I think a lot of other people have that have that same idea because um, South First offers so much promise right now. Um, there are so many cool little places that are just trying to blossom along South First. So many neat little local shops and restaurants, but you really don't see people wandering up and down South First, going from one to another. It is not South First is not really a pedestrian corridor because it's so heavily dominated by fast-moving car traffic. It's not a place where pedestrians would want to move around. And if you just made some changes to the roadway to make it a little more, a little calmer car-wise and a little, uh, a little more pleasant for everybody who's not in the car, it could be a whole different world. And then uh, in the process, uh, throw in some greenery, have, have, um, have some street trees providing shade to make it easier to walk, uh, have some, some green infrastructure um, and you can have a really lovely, attractive street. And imagine if you did that. And, and imagine then if you've got um, the opportunity to support all these cool local businesses, the kind of marginal sort of shops that you might have found on South Congress a few years back, but, but don't see so much on South Congress these days because it's kind of more high dollar. So, uh, so think of all the great little local shops and taco stands and all the great little local places along South First. Think what an awesome corridor South First could be if you just tamed the car traffic 
and made it a more appealing place for everybody else. It could just be awesome and, and such a such a mecca, such a fun place to be. And uh, that would become the new destination. People don't talk about South Perth right now as that much of a destination. People are still talking about about SoCo, even though it's gotten a little little bit some people some people feel like it's getting commercialized. But people could very easily be talking about South First as the cool new place, especially if it is a fun, inviting, green, leafy place that is safe for people who aren't in cars. And the changes that would get us there are so simple. We have just done a whole experiment on Barton Springs Road that demonstrates very, very thoroughly how you can actually maintain similar levels of, of throughput for cars just by managing the intersections properly. Um, we've seen on Pleasant Valley Road that you actually save money in the process by, by, uh, by making changes like this. So South First represents a golden opportunity for us to, to roll out some of these changes, uh, to do something truly amazing, to create a, 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 just an awesome street that everyone will love, that will become a real Austin treasure. And, uh, and if the Austin commu urbanist community were to get behind that, we could be so proud. Think of the Ciclovia we could have on South First. Think of all the parties, all the street parties we could be having on South First. Think of all the happy hours we could be having at all those cool little bars, um, all, the, all the great little shops and, um, and taco stands and, uh, and food trailers that, that uh, we could be enjoying there along South First. It could be so much fun. And then that's just South First. And then there's any number of comparable places all across the city. But South First is, would be a, a, a great place for, as, the next, as the next one to do. And then, and then you can start looking at places like uh, West 15th up here doing similar things. So, that, so there's, there's untold opportunities for that all across the city. And I really hope people will seize on those in the coming years. I really salute our city council for the very bold changes that that that, uh, that the council has been undertaking in recent years, with especially with regard to to um, housing and and transportation. And I really want to encourage the council to keep it up and to go even further, to be even bolder. This is a time that calls for dramatic urbanization in a way that speaks to the very best that cities can offer. And that means offering appealing, walkable places. And if, and if we are bold enough, we can create a mecca for that kind of urbanism that is, um, uh, that is a, um, an attraction for the, the, the whole world. And, Austinites will be very, very proud. You will be very proud of your legacy. It is a huge, huge opportunity. Uh, we can get amazing things done. Uh, I'm so proud of the council and I'm very excited and hopeful about the, the next steps that the council is gonna be taking. Um, and especially with regard to City Leap. City, City Leap represent, represents such a huge opportunity for the council to get behind a uh, a substantive policy proposal that will have very important and meaningful impacts on the ground. And, um, uh, and you will be, I, I promise you, the council will be very, very pleased and proud of the results. It will be uh, the kind of legacy that, that you will be very, very proud to, to leave behind because it will have uh, huge positive impacts for generations to come. And so um, I'm, I'm so excited about our council. I know it's capable of great things. I know it's going to achieve great things. And I would encourage you to, to go ahead and start looking on towards the next one, which I think would be things like South First and, and, and City Leap. But I know you'll find other things as well. There's so, so many great opportunities for, for urbanist successes that advance the cause of providing a, a, a a worldwide, a world setting, a worldwide example of what cities can do to fend off climate change, um, and and to offer a different model for how cities can grow, and to offer very pleasant, walkable environments where people don't have to drive everywhere, 
where people can take the, the, the climate war into their own, own hands. And that's really what Austin should be all about. And it is Austin is the, the council providing those sorts of opportunities for the citizenry to, to demonstrate just exactly what a city can do to demonstrate the, uh, the truly progressive ideals when it, when it comes to environmental responsibility and conscientiousness and to just being the kind of uh, welcoming green city that we've always aspired to be. And so I, I, um, uh, I'm so, so proud of the council and I'm so excited about everything that lies down the road. And, um, and so appreciate anyone taking the time to, to, to take a look at this and consider all this because I think there's uh, huge opportunities ahead and I, and I hope we'll make new stuff.